If you've ever bought silver from a private party, you'll want to watch this video. You have to be extremely careful these days, but counterfeits have been going around for a hundred years now. Hey YouTube, how you guys doing? This is Silver Husky. Today we're going to be doing a video discussing silver, purchasing of silver, and how to determine whether or not a piece of silver that you've bought is real or fake. And stay tuned to the end for an exclusive interview with Gary from Coining Jewelry Gallery of Boca Raton, where he talks about some of the fakes that have come through his shop. So with the rise in price of gold and silver, there's a lot of volatility and a lot of excitement, even the feeling of FOMO when it comes to purchasing gold and silver on apps like LetGo and OfferUp. And you may or may not know how to tell whether or not a piece of silver is real or fake. Uh, just for an example, these Atmex bars uh, are, are known to be made as copies or fakes. Uh, you can find them coming in from China via sites like Alibaba or Wish.com. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any right now available on those sites, but it can be quite confusing to know whether or not the piece that you bought is real because they do make them look uh, quite legitimate. So today we're going to be dis discussing different ways to determine whether or not a piece of silver is real or fake. Uh, one of the, the items or one of the methods that we'll be discussing is the magnetic method. We'll go over the ping test, uh, the ice test. Uh, there's also the specific gravity test and, of course, the most secure method, which would be uh, putting it on a Sigma machine or on an X-ray. The X-ray machine, just so you know, uh, this is a jeweler's X-ray. They are typically ten dollars to $15,000 for that machine. Very expensive, very likely that you cannot afford to get one like most people. A jewelry, obvious, uh, jewelry store obviously would uh, benefit from having one, but your, your average Boolean purchaser? Probably not. So, um, you know, a Sigma machine, I think you can get those for about $1,000. Uh, sometimes you might find one on sale. But uh, just, just to give you an example, we're going to go through all the different methods with these bars here. And at the end, we'll go through a Sigma uh, test to see if it is real. I'll take it to my coin shop and you can see that done there. And please note that there are other methods to test whether or not a piece of silver or gold are real or, or fake. These are just a handful of different methods that you can readily access yourself uh, if you have some of the tools available. I think the easiest and most accurate one that we're going to cover is the specific gravity test. But let's get started with the magnet test. So in order to conduct the magnet test, you're going to need a magnet, uh, not just any magnet, you will need one of those rare earth metal magnets, a very powerful one. This one right here, I think is rated to carry about 40 or 50 pounds of uh, iron or steel. Uh, so this is a highly powerful magnet. Again, please be very careful when using a magnet like this. Uh, it can especially be dangerous around children uh, in that it can pinch you. So here's an example. I put it under the table. You can see these things through about a one inch thick table and some rubber matting uh, that it's able to move these, uh, these pieces of metal around really easily. And you can see the silver itself is not affected by the magnet itself. So silver is diamagnetic uh, as opposed to these, uh, I think they're like iron or some iron composite, these uh, paper clips, uh, they do magnetize. Whereas silver being that it is diamagnetic means that it has a slightly magnetic property, meaning that it is momentarily magnetic but it will not stick, right? You're, you're seeing that it's not sticking. However, it ebbs and flows with the magnet. So it's dampened by the, uh, the force of the magnetic field. When you drop the silver on it or when you pull the magnet off of it, it temporarily tugs or pushes against it. It does the exact opposite of the force it, uh, of the magnet just for a moment. So you can see when I'm placing it on top and yanking it off of the the silver, the silver jumps, right? Every time I pull up, it jumps. So just a little bit, right? Because it's not enough to stick. And here you can see, this is a really cool property. Look at that. So just a slow slide uh, versus if I just drop it, it thumps down. You can see, uh, obviously, gravity has its own force, but it is slightly magnetic, not slightly magnetic, it's uh, diamagnetic. So here as it slides down, it just goes down really slowly. It almost hugs it as it slides down and then it falls off. And the vice versa can be done if uh, you were sliding one of the small bars off of the magnet. Uh, here I'll give you an example of that. So see, it kind of like swings around and 
and flails off, but it doesn't ever actually stick. It just kind of slides. So it slows down the flow. It slows down the, the rate of fall of the silver. So next up, we're going to cover the ice method. This one I actually just learned for the first time today. This one manipulates the property of silver of conductivity. So silver is known to be one of the most conductive metals. Uh, and here you can see I place a little piece of ice both on the rubber mat and on the, the bar of silver itself. And you can see I'm timing it to show you how much quicker this bar is going to melt that, that piece of ice. And the reason is it's distributing or it's actually transferring its heat into uh, that piece of ice and melting the ice down, pulling the water right off of it. Uh, it's it's drastically faster than uh, than actually just letting it sit on the mat. And I'll show you in just a minute. And it does take a little while for the whole uh, block of ice to, to disappear. And the reason is eventually all of the heat from that bar will be transferred into the ice and there's no more heat to transfer into it. So it slowly will... Um, will melt it'll still melt faster than if it was just sitting on the mat but you'll see that the rate of, uh, of melting is slower and just um i guess just for the sake of science uh, this bar was at room temperature the plate is at room temperature the mat is room temperature and the room temperature is about 72 as required by <laughs> our lease agreement uh, for this apartment we have to keep the the ac on 72 to keep the mold from forming because of course we do live in florida and mold is a big issue indoors so I'm gonna speed this up just so you see how long it's gonna take and you'll see that little piece of ice just floating around the whole block of, uh, of silver as it starts to melt down so here we go we are at 10 times the speed and you can see that little block of ice just bouncing around and the water just being pulled right off of it uh, it's pretty crazy I'm not moving or blowing the water or anything I'm not uh, shaking the plate out around much or <laughs> at all in this case but you can see the time is just flying away and as the time is going you see this uh, little little thing of ice just getting smaller and smaller until it's completely gone I think that's gonna be right around the uh, seven minute mark something like that so here we have just a few more seconds and that ice is really starting to go a little bit slower but look at that other block that other block is completely intact from when we first placed it down uh, and it's pretty impressive uh, again here i put it at normal speed so you can see at 7 15 we're going to stop it seven minutes and 15 seconds that chunk of ice is completely gone um, yeah there you go there's the proof and here you're going to see when i lift up the other block of ice there's only a tiny puddle of water where it was this thing is pretty much intact and it would probably have taken another 20 30 minutes for that thing to disappear completely so new test i just learned about definitely check it out uh, this one right here is called the specific gravity test you're going to need a scale it's going to be need to need to be set to grams so obviously you do need the scale. You're gonna need the bar of metal that you're gonna be testing. Each metal has its own specific gravity. Uh, you're gonna need some thread, and the thread should be uh, very thin. A glass of water, preferably plastic, but that's kind of all I had. Uh, it was a glass cup, and it shows better on video as well, but plastic weighs less. So anyways, take the weight of the, um, of the bar of silver in grams, 31.29, and you're gonna write that down. Here you're gonna see the equations that I'm using, right, 31.29, and that's going to be divided by the the gravity, the specific gravity, uh, the weight of the, the silver. So you fill it up with a little bit of water, right, you're going to put it on the scale, and then you hit the tear button, and the tear button will set it to zero, right, so you want to set that right there to zero in grams again. Now you take that thread, you're going to put that bar of silver into the thread and this is the tough part sometimes because you're going to want to have that balanced as well as possible so that it just kind of hovers so play with it a little bit get it to flatten out and that looks good enough so we're going to lightly lower that and what you're looking for is the weight once it is completely submerged and not touching the bottom that's the point is that it has to float right it has to be suspended in the middle 3.00 that's the number we're going to use all right, so this is going to be exactly three grams, right? Let's set this down. All right, and you write down the wet, so, uh, the, the weight of it, right? So it's 3.0. So you're going to take 31.29 divided by 3.0. Pretty easy calculation, right? And it should fall within a range, and that range is going to be 
uh, 10.4 to 10.6. You can see there's slightly on the left. I don't think I showed it too well, but 10.43 is the calculation. You can check my math, right? Uh, but yeah, that's the range right there, 10.4 to 10.6. Pretty awesome. Tests well, so that means that specific gravity is correct for these bars. And that puts us at three for three. All right, so for this test right here, uh, it's a very simple test. Obviously, you can tell the audio is a little bit different because I had to switch to actual audio. I'm not going to dub this over. Uh, this is called a ping test. And a ping test, uh, I will say, is it's not accurate, but it's an indicator, right? All of these things are indicators. The most accurate way would be, uh, you know, you'll see it in a second, but it's going to be the, the actual sigma or an x-ray um, they have the jeweler's x-ray guns or x-ray machines to verify what's in it. But a ping test is very specific to silver. Uh, silver has a very, um, I guess it's an obvious ring to it. A lot of different metals, when you clack them together, they kind of sound like clunk or something like that. They have a very, uh, I guess a very dull sound. Whereas silver rings, silver rings for a little while longer. So here you can hear it. And speaking of ring, don't forget to ring that notification bell. It'll keep you informed of any new videos that we have coming up. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and leave us a comment it's below. It's kind of hard to do because these things are not round, so they kind of wobble a little bit. But um, obviously, if you're holding it, it's going to muffle it. Uh, so it makes it a little bit tricky to tell. But a lot of times you can tell with certain coins, if you have like half dollars, they ring very differently than a clad half dollar. Uh, but it's just another indicator, of course. You know, there's no, as I mentioned, there's no other certain way to tell than to put it on an actual Sigma machine that can read the metal content. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so we're here with Gary at the uh, Coin Gallery, Coin and Jewelry Gallery of Boca Raton. Say hi, Gary. How you Hello. Doing? Awesome. So he's going to be talking to us today about fakes, and uh, and he's got us a couple of fakes that he received in a deal. You want to tell us a little bit about these? Okay, so these particular fakes were sent to me from a dealer, and they were in a bag of silver eagles that weren't perfect. There was about 460 coins. And I noticed these three coins just looked a little, besides having a copper look, they looked a little funny. So I put them on that Sigma machine, if you're not aware of what the Sigma machine, it detects counterfeit gold and silver. And it, they, they, all three coins came up counterfeit. And they were obviously bad. So um, you have to be extremely careful these days. But counterfeits have been going around for a hundred years now. Whenever you're dealing in something that's valuable, whether it's the Chinese counterfeits or back in the 60s, the Middle East, in Middle East, in Iraq, they were making counterfeit US gold coins, two and a half, fives, tens, and twenties. You have to be careful. If it sounds too good to be true, it's the old adage, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Stay away, okay? There's a lot of people, because the market is hot, that are getting into this business that will scam you. You're better off paying, going to your local dealer or someone that you know or referring you and getting a fair deal and getting the right thing. Right, so we, we often see certain terms that maybe a novice might not be aware of, but uh, you mentioned counterfeit versus like, let's say fake or restrike or copy. Uh, what, what's the difference and, and what's the significance behind it? So those? copy will basically be, it's a copy. So it's not a fake, it says right on the coin it's a copy. But some people, whether they inherited coins and they don't look and they don't see that it's a copy, you know, they, they, they think, oh, it could be a valuable coin. But if it says copy, it's a copy. It's not gonna be gold, it's not gonna be silver, it's gonna be a copy of either a coin or a bullion coin. Um, fake is simply uh, someone trying to deceive someone to buy something uh, of something that, that it's supposed to be, but it isn't. Right. Um, restrike is basically, if you hear the term restrike, and you'll hear this um, mainly with bullion related coins like 50 pesos mm -hmm. and um, Austrian 100 coronas, is what they did is these coins were struck the originals in the 40s and 30s and 20s. And what they did in the 60s and 70s, they restruck them with the same design. They're still gold and they're still real coins, but they're rest they call them restrikes. Okay. What, what's the most common uh, fake that you guys get in, in this shop? The most common, we don't get a lot of fake things here. We had a guy, a gentleman in a few months ago that had nine gold bars 
that supposedly he bought on eBay that were all counterfeit because we put them on the Sigma machine. We get some counterfeit gold, we get a little bit of everything, but not a ton of stuff. Counterfeit gold coins, another one of my local dealers told me he went to a shop and bought a $10 Indian and he found out the hard way, he sent it for grading, it was counterfeit. Wow. The experts such as myself, we know counterfeit coins. Right. We know we don't sell counterfeit coins. We will never sell counterfeit coins. Um, so you got to be careful. As gold and silver head higher, there will be more and more scam artists getting into this business because that's where the money is. Just like penny stocks and the stock market. Right. You, you've got to do your due diligence. If you think you're getting something that's way too cheap, it's probably a scam or not real. Now, when you discover a uh, counterfeit coin in your, whatever the purchase was that you made, uh, what, what do you do? Um, well, if you're dealing with someone legitimate, a dealer, like for this, gen this, this guy that came into my shop, he's giving it back to the dealer, and I don't think he'll have a problem, because the dealer didn't even know it was counterfeit. It got by him. Okay. Me, I'm an expert. I know if it's counterfeit. Anybody that's legitimate, if you buy something counterfeit, you have a return privilege. It's illegal to sell a U.S. counterfeit coin. If they don't give you your money back, you call the FBI and you report them. Wow. With, um, with bullion... If, if you go into a store these days that doesn't have either the Sigma machine for detecting counterfeit gold and silver or what they call the gun which tests the gold and silver or at least acid to test the gold and silver, if they don't have one of these things, don't buy it because they don't know if it's real or not. You can't tell. These, these counterfeits are so good. These bars that they put in the holders, I can't even tell without putting it on the Sigma machine. Right on. And so these three right here, you said they kind of look a little bit copper. They're obviously, they're plated with gold to kind of mask whatever it is they were originally made of. Um, and I mean, to me, the weight, the weight seems, it, it's got some heft to it. So I would have, I would have been fooled by like, say one like this, I would have been fooled by that. Did you, you pick them up right away or? Yes. Okay. But I mean, I was fooled too. I didn't, I picked them up right away because they were seconds and they were plated and they, something didn't look right. Now, with gold coins that were made prior to 1933, I was talking about uh, in, I, in the Middle East where they made a lot of counterfeit gold. See, you could tell the difference with, with those coins because in the, in the United States or any country, when they strike coins, they have to use a certain machine which they strike it with a certain amount of pressure that's almost impossible without spending millions of dollars to, to, for a machine to duplicate it. It's impossible to duplicate. So what these countries did, and when they made counterfeit U.S. gold coins, is they made them from a cast. They would, just like you would cast jewelry, they would pour the, the they would make the coin, the, take the impression, and then pour the gold in. The difference is, and you could Google this and learn a little bit more, is with a cast, it looks completely different from a struck coin. And there's a big difference, and mainly your, your expert coin dealers know this, but the amateurs don't know how to tell. Okay, awesome. W would it be okay to put one of these on a Sigma so we can take a peek sure. at what it shows sure. up as? What a fake would... Uh, sure, yeah. I think you've got one over there somewhere. Awesome. So guys, if you're ever in Boca, please come check out his shop. He is located on 441 in Palmetto Park in the shopping center by the Big Lots, right? Right next yes. door to the big lots. So you're gonna set it up, and when you place the coin on, it comes up as what? Just blank? The arrow is all the way to the right. That means it's bad. Now, if I was to put a real one here, you'll see where the arrow goes in between these two parentheses. You see how it's directly between? Oh, that shows okay. you at the genuine of the coin. Okay, awesome. Again, if you put it, this is the bad one, and you see where the arrow is, that's bad. Okay. So um, I brought this one, which you did test for me yesterday. So I just wanted to double check that. We've been doing several other tests with this piece and it's showing up right inside of that in the range. So this is good to go. Yep. Excellent. Okay. Thank you so much, Gary. Anytime. Uh, any, any closing words for the, the viewers? Just like I said, don't, don't, don't try to get something for nothing. If you think you're getting a bargain, deal with your local dealer. Check him on Google. Check his reviews. I have unbelievable reviews you know make sure you're dealing with someone that's been doing this a while not someone that got into the business three months ago because gold and silver up I've been doing this for 39 years and a lot of my friends have too so make sure you're doing it with someone that has the knowledge awesome thank you so much Gary have a great one guys don't forget to hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell for all upcoming videos thanks a lot see you next time